So it's Penny here, and this is my Thursdays uh, with Penny interview with experts. Now, what makes an expert, you ask yourself? And what makes me feel I can celebrate somebody's expertise? So let me just roll that through a little bit in my head as I explain this. I bet like you, I get asked a lot, who can you recommend? And who do you know who's an expert in? And it's really challenging because I want to help people find amazing suppliers. But I feel that I either have had to consume their skills myself or really deeply know this person mm. and have done the research on this person to feel that I can recommend them and understand the impact that they want to have. So I'm introducing you today to Scott, who is known as the writing guy. Mm -hmm. And Scott Keezer is his name. And if you're watching this on uh, LinkedIn, you'll certainly know him. He does the most amazing uh, writing and posts and commentary helping people to become better writers. If you're watching it on Facebook, because we'll share it there, you'll also know Scott. And, and um, it is a, a huge joy for me that I can introduce you to Scott. I have known Scott for over 10 years, and I can thank Scott for the title of my book, Business is Personal, um, because Scott is a very perceptive man, and he gets to the nub of the message that people want to get across. Um, so Scott helps professionals engage with clients through the written word. And we all know how critical that is. And people ask me all the time, what makes somebody great at blogging? What makes somebody great at writing bids? What makes somebody great at doing many things that require the written word? And I would say not everybody is good at it. And so Scott works with um, professional services, um, and works with many companies, large corporates, but also works with us entrepreneurs to help us do proposals, pitches, bid, write white papers, articles, even help you with your bios and make sure that they have the impact. Um, so this really helps readers engage. And so now, not as much me talking now, I want to um, ask Scott three very clear questions. And, um, you'll be able to read, listen to these in a series of videos. So Scott, lovely to have you Hi, here with me. Yeah. It's really I'm exciting. Be... I've really looked forward to this for a long time since we agreed that I could spend some time with you. So thank you. Oh, I bet you say that to all the boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you've got me. But actually, this is a subject I'm really passionate about. And when I first got talking to you about it, it was like listening to a musician. <laughs> wow <laughs> and um because it's beautiful yeah. it, it really is truly beautiful your use of language um in fact there's some thoughts you've got around that haven't you about rhythm um yeah. as well i don't know whether you want to share that in this in this conversation sure. today sure yeah i mean uh, i'm happy to talk about that now so um uh, you know i've been i've been doing this this work for about 15 years and um at last count, I think I've trained over 5,000 professionals in writing skills. Amazing. And, and, and what I do, and it has been amazing, Penny, and it continues to be the most incredible journey. I'm, I'm amazingly lucky. But um, just recently, just in the last six months, I've been thinking a lot about the music of, of writing as well and the, and the cadence and the rhythm. And so I, I started studying something called prosody, which is the, the study of the versification of language, so the poetry of language. And I found a, a, very, a very rudimentary way of mapping the rhythm of a piece of writing, so a piece of prose, and showing that as a, as a wave, as a waveform. So people could, I mean, you know, when I eventually develop it, um, people could see the rhythm and the wave of their writing. Wow. Which may well be of interest in, in just gaining more perception and more insights into their writing. Yeah, I mean, I, I sort of really get that because it, we all see when some reason somebody's post or something, mm. would you just get massive engagement? Mm. Mm. And I imagine their tone of voice or, and mm. what you now to, you know, are talking yeah. about with them is so much part of it. Yeah. Um, and people pour time into writing, don't they? Whether oh. it's a book yeah. or a post or a bid or whatever. Yeah. They, they, they do. I mean, they, they agonise over it. And, um, 
and my heart goes out. I feel for them because actually it's 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 not an easy skill, but it's re- it's such a learnable skill. People yeah. think it's a kind of ninja style black eye. It, it ain't. You know? It's yeah, really not a learnable skill. So what I want to do is start to learn because there's nothing more frustrating to me when I watch an interview with someone and I'm so inspired and I really really want to. Mm spend time with that expert and I don't know how to. So what are the ways that people can get, you know, work with you? What are the programs, the ways that you um, engage with them? Sure. Well, I mean, my, my, I suppose my, my signature product is, is a one day, is the one day writing workshop. Right. Uh, which is the Rhetorica writing workshop. And, um, and in that workshop, I mean, it's, it's a high energy day. We cover, lo- we, we cover all 21 of my rhetorica techniques. Yeah. A number of years ago, I, I identified 21 persuasive writing techniques that, by the way, they don't teach us in school, uh, which is a major kind of gap. And you know, maybe that's for another day, but, but I am on a bit of a mission to change the national curriculum as well. Yeah. Because we don't teach persuasive writing in a systematic way or, or or most schools don't you know so um i run a one, one day workshop uh, both in house and also as an open course and in fact the next one i'm running is on monday right in london and I, in fact funnily enough i do i do still have a couple of places left wow uh, but it is only for a small group at the moment i think i've got um uh, 10 10 bookings but i could take a few more right I also work with people um, one-to-one, so I do, I do book coaching, I help people write, you know, produce the best possible book that they could. Um, I've worked with a number of partners in law firms on a one-to-one basis. Yeah. Um, what else do I do? So you do these bid ones as well, because I know that yeah. all these bids that people can put in, they are... I think what somebody wins it or not must be down to the language they use and how they under- interpret the needs of the person they're bidding to. Well, well, yes and no. It's it's actually much more the latter. Um, ironically, it's not so much about the language that they use. It's about the the content and really understanding the client's pain points. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, the, this is where most bidders go sort of fakely wrong. Is that they think it's all about yeah, well, they, they do what I talk about in my online program, which is they we all over the client. You know, they say, we've done this, we've done that. Uh, we're great at this. Look at us. We've got 1,500 offices around the world with 10,000 partners. And you know what? The client, the, the buyer isn't interested. Yeah, and of course they, not. Because they're more interested in themselves than in you, than in you, the, the bidder. So it's about being buyer-centric. Yeah, yeah, and I like really, that. Really, really getting under the skin of the buyer and understanding each individual decision maker's pain points. Yeah, brilliant. That, and that's what most bidders don't do. Yeah. And the thing is, you know, what's... Dare I say... Uh, sorry? Dare I say it's what most people who aren't yeah. properly trained in sales do. No. Because yeah. they, they, they talk about all their features and maybe their credibility and they yeah. forget that, okay, tick, I get it now. Mm. Now, what is it? What's about me? So yeah. I, I love that. But you mentioned there the online course as well that you yeah. advised, which tell me about that. So, oh my goodness, Penny, it's been, <laughs> I mean, I think I, it's, been, it's been in the offing for years. I've talked about it. My family almost disowned me. I mean, the number of times I think my wife reached for the phone to call the, the divorce lawyers, you know, it was like, just get on and do it, you know. So actually, finally, after several years, um, I've gone live with an online writing skills program that I'm really pleased with. But I tell you, Penny, it's more work than writing a book. Mm. It really is. So, so basically, I just describe what it is. It's, um, it's called Write for Results Online. And it nails what I call the nasty nine. And these are the nine most common writing issues that bedevil almost all corporate and business writing. And and so it's a series of it's nine video modules or tutorials. Uh And module number one is weeing all over your reader, because that's what most, you know, most business writers do. And and it covers things like how to structure your writing. how to invigorate your writing, how to add drama and spice to it, how to check and edit, 
And the, the thing is, once if you nail the nasty nine, you're well on your way to being a, a great writer. I cannot imagine how useful that would be for people going through university and just. Oh, oh yeah. Well, I mean that that's a massive market as well. Students and people in their final year at uni. Yeah. About to embark on, you know, about to join the world of work. So I know, but no, we're going to put um, things saying how people can get to know about all these different programs. What's sure. the best way for people to be able to know about those programs that you've just explained? Um, is there a sort of a catch-all place? Yeah, pr probably. I mean, e either to engage with me on LinkedIn through my profile. Yeah. Or to go to my website, which is uh, writeforresults.com. For right, brilliant. That's, That's right, as in write a book, F-O-R-results.com. Brilliant. Yeah. That's fantastic, because, um, you know, it's amazing. Somebody who has mentored both of us on, uh, Hannah, who's been mentoring both of us on yeah. impact, and she comes into the mastermind groups and things. And I think a lot of us fear telling looking like we're being salespeople but actually the reason that i really want you and other the experts i've got to know about to do this is because people need to know how to get the skills that they need into their business sure. and i know i know firsthand and i know from the other people and i've seen the testimonials and seen the videos from people that have said how much impact you've had on them and it's phenomenal so i'm really glad i'm really Thank pleased. Mm. so i'm going to close that off now mm. and and i hope people get in touch with you sure the next thing I want to ask is why, what's your journey to being so in love with this? Ooh, I was thinking about this the other day, actually. Um, I, <laughs> I think it goes back to when I was six and I wrote, I wrote a story called I Am A Shoe. And I was imagining being a shoe on the end of somebody's foot. And I, I can't remember, I need to, probably in the garden shed somewhere, but I think I, I think I ended up getting kicked off by the foot and I ended up in a, in a gutter and, and then uh, being swept downstream. And um, I don't know, I just think it was my, probably deeply Freudian, you know, psychoanalyst would have a field day, but um, I don't know, Penny, I've just, you know, what people don't really get, what people don't appreciate is that in the English language, we are just possessors of the most, it's a gift. It's the most incredible language, I believe anyway, because it's got these three um, strands running through it, which give it its richness. And the strands are um, the, the sort of the, all the Romance languages, which like French and Italian and Spanish are basically from Latin. So there's a very strong Latinate strand which gives us many, many of our words, but it also gives us a lot of the kind of the flowery stuff and the flamboyance. The second strand is from Ang is Anglo-Saxon, which is based on the language that the Jutes and the Angles and the Saxons spoke, so the, the Germanic languages. And that's where we get the real powerful words, you know, the vivid, visceral, visual words, which are essentially plain English, in the middle of what we call the register. And then the third strand is all the words we borrowed from Greek, like um, biology, which means bios means life, and ology means a study of, of, and the study of life, you know. So these three strands come together, and then obviously people like Shakespeare just use the language. I mean, Shakespeare invented part of the English language. He, he, he was a neologist. He invented new words. And so there's this richness and beauty of language that in corporate writing particularly you just gets strangled. It really does. It gets kind of choked. And yeah, so I'm kind of in love with the language. But where it comes from, I don't know. Um, oh, I love that story. If he was a little boy, <laughs> I just fall well, in love. I am a shoe. Oh, my God. I wish you could find that story. Oh, maybe I will. Well, yeah. I also, also think you found it. What a beautiful book to have. Yeah. Because I'm thinking of all the metaphors around that is, is yeah. incredible. So um, that love of something, that passion, mm. what, what did you do? Did you go and study language? What did you do to get to I did, psychology? Um, well, when somebody asked me what I did at university, I said not very much, really. I theoretically studied French and German. 
I say theoretically because I mean I didn't really get going until my final year. Although, although I had the best year of my life, I was um, I was an English assistant in a in a French lycée in Paris for a year, which was just wow. And I shared a flat in in the seventh arrondissement with three French three French students, and my French is still fluent. My German's kind of gone, but um, wow. yes, yeah, so I've you know I studied languages. What I tell you, what really actually. In fact, now I'm thinking about it, what really cemented my love of language was um, at the age of 12, my parents took me out of a really dodgy prep school in Notting Hill Gate uh, that no longer exists. It was actually run by a paedophile. <gasps> and um, they put me in this amazing tutorial school with me and 12 other pupils run by the most incredible teacher I've ever known called Christopher Trevor Roberts. And he was, he tutored all the members of the royal family, Andrew and Charles and Princess Anne. And he was, he was just like a gift from God. He was the most divine, incredible teacher. And I think he basically took the lid off my head, threw some Semtex in and gave me a complete love of language and a love of learning. And, and two terms with him, I got into Westminster, uh, almost got a scholarship. Thanks to that, I got into Oxford. And, it was actually down to him, I think, just his incredible love of learning. And he was enthusiastic, um, which is, by the way, that's from the Greek meaning in theos, meaning in God. So when, when we're enthusiastic and we're absorbed by something, we're actually, we're kind of touching the divine. Yeah. yeah, channeling, yeah. So actually thinking about it, it was really down to Christopher Trevor Roberts. And his son still runs a, a school. Oh. Uh, in Hampstead, but it's a much bigger school now, you know. Oh, beautiful. His dad was amazing. Was he? It'd be lovely for him to hear this tribute, actually. Yeah, sadly, he died um, many oh, well, yeah. years ago. But, uh, but he knew, he knew, he, he, he didn't even need to be told. He loved teaching so much. That was his, that was his reward. Yeah. Well, some, you know, so some people can pick up a skill. And I think, you know, we know, you can tell when somebody's just got a skill. Mm. and it, they've honed it or whether yeah. they're really passionate about it mm. I mean, when you're listening to you your passion is just and i know when i spend time with you how quickly you well up as a person emotionally yeah. i mean you were doing it just then yeah i kind of it's i don't know if it's a problem but when i get excited because i do get very excited about writing a language it, it, i do i do get a bit sort of intense about it but i suppose that's the way i'm wired really and and yeah. uh, i do love it well, I think that's why all these people that come to you, not people would say, oh God, I'm, my company sent me on a writing workshop, mm -hmm. but they, they come away mm. so in love with the language. I mean, you've just shared with me stuff I didn't know, and I feel mm. like it's, it's phenomenal, it's beautiful. Oh, thank you, Penny. So you I feel that whenever I'm with you or when you talk, I mean, you're mm. moving around, the excitement, <laughs> is that you're almost on a personal mission in life around this, yeah. aren't you? What, what, can you explain that okay so um i have shared this story with you and thomas before but um a few years ago my dad died i was very close to my dad and then and the night before he i think he knew he was going to die and he gave he gave me a big hug and he said you know i've had a good life i've raised two lovely kids but i've not pulled up any trees and what he meant by that was he hadn't really done anything extraordinary mm -hmm. and i suppose you know, I, I want to pull up a tree or two. And, and one, one of my sort of goals is I want to add something original to the body of knowledge about the English language. And related to that, what I want to do, because I, I reckon I've cracked the code for, for writing well, for teaching writing to anybody, uh, native and non-native English speakers as a learnable skill. And next year, 2020, what I'm, what I want to do is I want to create a small family of trainers around me, around the world, who basically go out into the world and spread the word about my writing method. Because I, give, given, um, given a fair wind and a motivated delegate or attendee or whatever you want to call them, a client, I can transform somebody's writing in a day. And that, that I think is my mission. So I actually want to change, I want to transform how, how writing skills are taught around the world. It's global, it's not national. And that, I'm really excited about it. 
God, I can absolutely see that impact. I don't think, can you think in history ever a time when more people need to be able to write than they than now? Well, no, I mean, it's really interesting. You know, I, 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 need some, I need to back this up with some data, but just looking at some of the figures, I think that in the last 10 years, more words have been written in the last 1,000. Yeah. Because everybody is blogging, everybody is posting, everybody, it seems to me, is writing either a book or an e-book. Yeah. So and, in the last 10 years, more words have been written in the last 1,000 days? Yeah, than in the last 1,000, yeah. 1,000 days? No, the last 1,000 years. Oh, I see what you mean. More yeah. words have been written in the last 10 years than there were yeah. in the previous... In the previous 1,000, because everybody, you know, A, we're, we're a bigger population, there are 7 billion. Obviously, not everybody is online, but you look at the billions or millions of posts, yeah. the, the articles, the blogs, the e-books, the books, the, you know, everybody is writing. So, in a way, we're all writers now, and yet many people struggle with that as a skill. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's absolutely, it is. The impact is phenomenal. I yeah. know the impact. I've firsthand seen and witnessed the impact. Well, and you're such a lovely man to spend time with, Scott, uh, as well. I mean, I know that <laughs> I know that sounds like I'm blowing smoke up your bottom. Yeah. <laughs> but seriously. I thought I had a nice warm feeling somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I just think that, you know, this, sound, this takes us back to school days and we're imagining sitting in a classroom being given writing lessons. Yeah. But the way that you do it is so persuasive and so beautiful and so life um, changing really, because yeah. if, people, if people can just touch that keyboard mm. and feel differently about how they're gonna write that, their, their energy, where they're doing it from, their energy towards it, their impact's gonna be greater, isn't it? Well, I mean, it's interesting you say that, Penny, because on a few occasions where, where in, one, in my workshops, where this stuff has really flown, it's really taken off. I've literally witnessed kind of Damascene style personal transformations where people have just completely changed yeah. uh, because in a way I've given them permission or they've given themselves permission to really express themselves. And, and, and the transformation has been profound I can... and really moving. And, and you use a really interesting piece of language there, which is that, isn't it amazing the world we live in, if somebody can touch the keyboard in the right way, they can actually touch the world? Yeah. I mean, what an amazing idea. No, no, absolutely. But I, I know that that's somewhere I have to come to when I know I'm going to write a post. Mm. So many of us are driven by our business language of, you know, our cash flow and how we're going to... But when I write a post, if I don't shift my energy and get into... The emotion of it and know how to touch my keyboard yeah. and I know when I mean this thing we had a conversation about my book and how cathartic it is as well to heal through yeah. your writing yeah you know it's and I know that's very powerful people even if they never share what they write but they sure. know how to yeah to do it to, no, no, I, I, absolutely I mean I, I think um I, I think the therapeutic and the healing qualities of writing are more, even more important than, than the business related ones actually. Yeah. But because one of the things that I'm, one of the things I'm trialing on Monday in this, in this workshop is a very simple, um, a new voice technology that's going to help people find their writing voice and find their voice. Um, and there's a link, it's fascinating, there's a link between breath, voice and spirit. I shared this with, with you the other day, that the word spirit comes from spiritus, which is Latin for breath. So spirit and breath and voice are all linked. Yeah. When we find our voice, we connect with our spirit, and that enables us to connect with other people's spirits. Yeah. So it's, it's really powerful. It's like a master key that unlocks yeah, uh, I can... treasure. You know, while I'm, so we have known each other a while and there's this story I wanted to share with you because it's so pertinent to how I feel about you, is that my sister-in-law once, um, she came back from living in America and stayed in this sort of manor house and had a wing of it in Wiltshire. And every Saturday evening she'd go and sit by this huge fireplace and have a glass of sherry with this lady who was in her 60s, 65 I think she was. And Kate said to her one day, you know, you are the most inspiring, beautiful person. And this lady said to her, Kate, 
Do you know, I'm finally the age I was born to be. <laughs> and I really feel that I just watch you physically. I watch you as a man. I just watch, I just feel this is your time. This, because the impact you can have yeah. and your skills that you've inherently got and invested in, it's just, to me, it's, this is your time. Well, that's, it's really sweet of you to, to say so, Penny. And I kind of, uh, and there's no ego involved in this, but I kind of agree with you. I, I sort of feel that, um, that, yeah, I'm kind of giving myself permission to be me. Yeah. And I've got, you know, I think we've all got a gift to give the world. And, and mine is, I believe, is language and writing. So yeah. I'm going to go for it, you know. Oh, um, I'm thrilled. And what I love is I've interviewed you because I can share you with my world and spoken <laughs> Thomas and, yeah, and everybody else that just you've touched and, and love. Okay, so thank brilliant. you very much. It's been a pleasure. It's wonderful. Brilliant. So now this is my self-indulgent piece. Yeah, yeah. I would really love because um, it helps me to be able to help other people decide whether the mastermind is right for them. And I now want true honesty about this because I think you'll know from when we've talked about mastermind, I never want anybody to join that this isn't that there isn't this sort of chemistry that makes it the right time for them. But can you just feed back a little bit for me about your experience of the mastermind and, and what it, whether, what it is contributing, if it is at all? Sure. So um, it, it was, it was, a, I have to be honest with you, it was a big step up for me because um, uh, as I shared with, with, with you and the rest of the group on our first, on our first meeting, um, I just come through a really lean period in my business. And um, to be honest with you, I barely had three shekels to rub together. And um, so it was, it was a big step up, but I decided a couple of years ago that I wanted to work with you and Thomas and this opportunity came along and I thought, well, you know, I've got to grab it with both hands. And I'm really glad I did because you know, not only do I really enjoy the actual days that we spend in a group, but I, I really appreciate the support between those days, mm. uh, between the mastermind sessions. And, um, you know, I think you and Thomas create a really powerful kind of combo in, in a way. Oh. And um, I've just got a huge amount of value out of it, a lot of support, a lot of love, a lot of encouragement and, and I think part of the part of what you've observed about me sort of really beginning to take hold of what I'm about and my mission and my destiny I'm destiny is a very big word it, but it is part of that has been being part of this group oh, that's wonderful. I think that's kind of moved me moved me on spiritually and emotionally um to to where I, i'm at now so yeah i mean it's uh, i would highly recommend it oh that's that's phenomenal but you know what's really critical about a mastermind as opposed to personal coaching mm. is it's the group isn't it yeah this is the group dynamics and whilst i love I, I would love to um feel that thomas and i are contributing and making changes in people's lives mm. you know i watch the way you contribute to everyone and and I think it's that that sh shared journey, isn't it, mm. of everybody? So it's I really appreciate that sure. praise. You know, this this journey that we're all on of running our own businesses can be, as you well know, can be lonely. It's a tough gig sometimes. It really is. Yeah. Oh. And, um, if you haven't if you haven't experienced it, you don't really know. You know, you it's hard to to understand. Yeah, it is, yeah. and I know. You know, when you said you were in a lean period. You were basically investing in yourself in terms of researching yes. and building programs and stepping back. And I know how well, you know, I can just see your future. It's just fantastic. And I'm right there behind you. Yeah, great. So excited. Go for it. <laughs> well, thanks for this time, Scott. It's I know. Nice. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been brilliant. Lovely. Thank you. It's wonderful. Thank you. Bye.